In Module 3, Lesson 9, we're going to continue talking about adding fractions and making those like units numerically instead of using our rectangular fraction models to make like units. The problem that we're going to start working with is 1 half plus 1 fifth. Step 1 is we want to find the common denom denominator or make like units that we've been talking about. In our example in class, we talked about how we couldn't add teachers and students together. We had to change their uh, names or rename them into something that was alike so that we could create a like answer. Here we have halves and fifths, and we can't put those together until we rename them into something that is the same. The conjecture that we came up with in class is to multiply the numerator and the denominator of one of the fractions by the denominator of the other fraction. So what this means is if we have our That's what I forgot. one half, and then we're going to, like it says, multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator of the opposite or other fraction, which is 5. So we'd multiply the top and the bottom by 5. And we've talked about how when we make equivalent fractions that in order to keep the number the same that we have to multiply by something that is equal to 1, which would be our 5 over 5 or 1 full unit. So that would be 1 times 5 is 5 and then 2 times 5 is 10. Then if we took our other fraction, 1 fifth, and we followed the same conjecture, we're multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator of the other fraction, which is 2. So we do 1 times 2 and 5 times 2. And then again, I like to draw that 1 so I can visually see that I'm actually multiplying by 1, which is how you keep your fractions equivalent. So the equivalent fraction in this case would be 1 times 2, which is 2, and then 5 times 2, which is 10. Now we want to take our equivalent fractions that we created and we want to rewrite the original equation with our new equivalent fractions. So I would take the 1 half is now 5 tenths, so I'd write that out as 5 tenths added to my second equivalent fraction which is 2 tenths. And then we talked about our conjecture in class that when we're adding, our whole has to stay the same. And our whole, or the number of pieces in our whole for this problem is 10. So my whole has to remain 10. And then I can add my pieces together up top. So 5 plus 2 is 7. So the answer to 1 half plus 1 fifth is 7 tenths. We did step three and we also remembered our whole and talking about how everything needs to stay 10. Step four is to simplify our answer and if you remember back a couple weeks ago we talked about dividing by something that is equal to one. But in this case, we cannot divide both numbers by the same number. So this 7 tenths is actually our simplified answer. All right, let's work with this problem. Uh, 1 half plus 2 thirds. Step 1 is we find that common denominator since we have two different denominators, uh, halves and thirds, and we need them to be like. We'll use our conjecture. So we'll kind of set up our problem like this, where we're taking one of the fractions in parentheses, so 1 half, 
and changing that, and then we'll be adding it to that second fraction, 2 thirds, in a second set of parentheses. So we can kind of see the progression as we go down. So if we're looking at our conjecture, the numerator and the denominator of this first fraction will be multiplied by the denominator of the other fraction. So we would be multiplying the top numerator by 3 and multiplying the bottom numerator by 3, which we've talked about being that 1. And that would equal 1 times 3 is 3 over 2 times 3 is 6. So if we come down here in our first parentheses, our equivalent fraction, rewriting that in step 2, is 3, 6 plus, and now we'll move on to our second fraction, 2 thirds. We'll be multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the denominator of the opposite fraction, which for this one is 2, so we multiply the numerator by 2, and we multiply the denominator by 2, and seeing that as 1 again, so that we can make sure that we're not changing the value of our fraction, and that would be equal to 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So we go down here and finish writing our new equation with our equivalent fractions, making sure that we now have a common denominator, 6 and 6, and so we can now add those. So solve, we want to remember our whole. If this fraction is out of 6 and this fraction is also out of 6 or 6 parts, our answer also needs to be 6 parts because our whole remains the same. Then we add our top numbers together or how many parts we have. So we have 3 parts here plus 4 parts here is equal to 7 parts. Now we get to step Four, which is to simplify our answer. Here, if you notice, we have six parts in our whole, but we have seven parts total. So we can actually create that mixed number because if our whole is six parts and we have seven pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, we need to draw another hole to add that seventh part. Right here. So we can see that we have one full hole, so we draw a big one whole number, and then what we have left is 1 6. The other way that you can think about doing this and changing 7 6 into 1 and 1 6 is you can look how many parts you have, which is 6, and if you know that 6 parts makes one whole and you have 7 parts, you do 7 minus 6 because this is going to be your one hole, right? And so you have your one hole, which is that that you're minusing and six. And what you're left over with is seven minus six. You're left with one part out of six after you've taken out the hole. And then you also have the one six. So two different ways. You can use a visual to show 
or you can visualize taking out that hole here, that whole part of six, and then seeing what's left over. So one half plus two thirds is one and one sixth. 